Welcome to another edition in our exponential equations. This is part three. Now, my friends, here they're asking us to find the unknown in the following, which simply means we're supposed to find the variable, the, the letters uh, in the following problems that they have given us. Uh, however, before I start, a quick advisor to note that if you if you are not strong on your indices, I would recommend that you do the lessons in this playlist uh, on indices before, because that's simply what we're going to be doing. We're going to be building on those key concepts okay so I'm just gonna be moving a little bit faster all right my friends so if you're not that strong you could always revisit those lessons before you do this however if you have a strong base on indices it's it's all good you can just quickly get into this now my friends in question one we have one eight is equal to 4k okay now if we're trying to solve for k, it simply means, uh, as we have been doing before, uh, when given an indices equation or an exponential equation, uh, what we want to do, we want to have a common base on both sides. Now, if you should note, if you should remember, based on the rule, um, this would be 8 to the positive 1. 1, 8 is the same as 1 upon 8 to the positive 1, and that's equal to 4 to the k. Now, based on the inverse rule, we know that we can flip this and the power becomes positive becomes negative rather okay so here if i should flip this i would have a 8 raised to the negative 1 and that would be equal to 4 raised to the k power okay now why did i do this it's because i need to have the same base on both sides okay now simply my friends i'm going to write the base 8 um base 8 that I have here on my left hand side, I'm going to write it as a base 2, okay? And we know that 8 is the same as 2 to the 3, okay? And let's just put that in a bracket, and that's raised to the negative 1, okay? And that's equal to, and we know that base 4 can also be re rewritten as 2 to the 2, and we can just simply put that in a bracket, and that's raised to the power of k. Now, by using the by using the power to power rule or the exponent to exponent rule uh, this would really give us a uh, base 2 and i'm just simply multiplying the power so i'm saying 3 times negative 1 that will give me a negative 3 okay and this will be equal to i'm just simply saying my base 2 and i'm saying 2 times k that will give us a 2k okay now by comparison if you notice now my friends we have the same base on both sides of our equation hence we can just simply equate the powers so we can just simply say then all we're going to do is to equate the power so really what we have on the left hand side here we have a negative 3 and that would be equal to 2k okay so we can simply take this up top let's just work this out up top Let's just split the screen here a bit. So really what I have here, my friends, is negative 3 is equal to 2k, okay? Now, if you notice, the 2 is multiplying the k, so we're going to have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So let's just divide through by 2. Therefore, therefore, negative 3 upon 2, okay, and this is a 3, negative 3 upon 2 is equal to, 2 will cancel itself. 2 into itself once, 2 into that goes once, is equal to k, okay? Which can also be written as k is equal to negative 3 upon 2. It doesn't matter how you write it. It's an equation, okay? But this would be the general form, all right? So pretty much that's it. Pretty much that's it for question 1. Now let's look at question 2 quickly. Now my friends here, let's just split the screen here a bit. Let's just split the screen there. Okay, good. Now, in question two, here, my friends, they're saying m raised to the power of x plus 4 is multiplying. Because if you notice, we have a bracket here. is multiplying m raised to the power of 2x, and that is equal to m raised to the power of x minus 9. All right? Now, m, let, we can just simply rewrite this in another way. We can simply say this is m raised to the power of x plus 4 okay and that is multiplying and let's just change the sign let's just put the multiplication sign and again i'm going to use a raised dot a raised dot means to multiply and that simply is multiplying m raised to the 2x power 2x power and that is equal to m raised to the x minus 9 okay my friends now if you notice we have a base m on my left hand side of the equation i have a base m multiplying another base m so remember in the first lesson when multiplying indices of the same base we simply add the powers so i can just simply rewrite this as the base m 
base m is raised to the x plus 4, okay? And I'm simply adding 2x to that, okay? All right, and if you're not sure about this, you could revisit the first rule on indices uh, when multiplying indices of the same base, and that will explain that to you a lot better. Okay, my friends? Now, if you notice on my right-hand side, I have a base m raised to the x minus 9. Now, by comparison, on both sides of my equation, I have a common base. The base is the same. So this simply means then I can just go ahead and equate my powers. So then, then, therefore, this simply means I can say x plus 4 plus 2x plus 2x, okay, is equal to x minus 9, okay? So basically, that's what we would have there. Since the bases are the same, we just go ahead and equate the powers. Let's just call it like terms. Uh, 2x, 2x, I have a x here and I have a 2x there. So 2x plus x, that would give me a 3x plus 4 is equal to x minus 9, okay? Now, let's just take this up on the side here so that we can have a little bit more space to work with, okay, guys? Now, really, I have left over here, I have a 3, 3x three plus 4, okay? And that is equal to x minus 9. Now, really, my friends, if you should look at this carefully, you would have realized that we have a... We have a positive 3x here and a positive x over there. So let's just bring all our x's to one side. So since the x on my right-hand side is a positive x, I'll have to subtract x from both sides of my equation. So therefore, I would have to say x minus x plus 4, okay, is equal to x minus x. I'm subtracting x from both sides, minus 9. I'm just took back down my negative 9 there, okay? And we can just pull this over a bit so that we can have a little bit more space to work with, okay? I think that should be good enough. So basically, my friends, what we have left over here, uh, we know that 3x minus x, that would leave us with a 2x, okay? And we have a positive 4 there, and that is equal to x minus x. We know that a positive x will cancel out with a negative x, so we're left with negative 9 there. Now, if you notice, I have a 4. I have a positive 4 adding to a 2x there. So I need to move all my numbers to the right-hand side. So I'm just going to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So really, I have a 2x plus 4, okay? And I'm going to have to subtract 4 from both sides. So that is equal to minus 9 minus 4, okay? Now, really, my friends, and let's just, I think we need to pull this over a little bit. Okay, good. So, really, my friends, what, what is left here? Basically, we know that we have a 2x here, and the positive 4 will cancel out with the negative 4, and that is equal to negative 9 minus 4. Uh, the signs are the same, so we simply add the numbers and keep the sign. So, we have a negative 9 plus 4, that's 13. Okay, now, if you notice, I have a 2 multiplying my x on my left hand side so I will have to do the opposite of multiplication which is to divide through by 2 okay so therefore okay what I do to one side I have to do it to the other side so therefore I have an x left over here and that is equal to a negative 13 upon 2 okay so that would be our solutions really right there uh, we can just quickly move on to another example uh, just to show you what is happening so let's just pull this up a bit before we close let's just do a final example now in example number three my friends we have 2 raised to the power of x squared and that is equal to 16 raised to the power of x minus 1 so basically um what we're doing again, same thing, uh, we want to get a common base. So on my left hand side, I have a 2 raised to the power of x squared, and that is equal to 16 raised to the power of x minus 2. So since base 2 is, is a simple base, I need to write 16 as a base 2, okay, to get the, si the same base on both sides. So really, I know that 2 to the fourth power is 16, but 16 was raised to the x minus 1. So I have to bracket that, and I'm going to raise that to the x minus 1. Now, really, my friends, what we have here, um, we have a we have a 2x here, 2 raised to the power rather of x squared, and that is equal to. Now I go, I'm going to have to multiply my powers. So this is really saying 2, and I have a, my power that is inside here multiplying the powers on the outside. So I'm just going to put that in a bracket x minus 1, okay? So really, um, 
we are just simply going to remove these brackets by saying four times x. So here now, my friends, I would have a two raised to the power of x squared, and that is equal to base two, and I'm saying four times x will give me a four x, okay? And four times negative one will give me a negative four, okay? Now, if you notice, I have the same bases on both sides. If you notice, I have a base two there, and if you notice on the other side, I also have a base two there. So it simply means I can go ahead and equate my powers. So really my powers in this case, uh, we have a x square on my left side, and that is equal to four x, okay? Plus minus rather, my bad, minus four. Okay guys, so subtract four. So if you should look at this carefully, um, this is a quadratic equation that we have here. Now I'm not going to go through the steps in teaching you how to solve a quadratic. I'm just going to solve the question based on the interest of time. However, if you're not sure about solving quadratic equations, you could always go back to our channel and check out our playlist on quadratics where you're taught to solve quadratic equations. So basically what is happening here, my friends, let's get into it. We have a X square here and remember, when solving a quadratic, uh, we are taking all the numbers and all the variables to the left side and the right side. We're going to be equating that to zero. So this is a this is a positive four x. So when it comes over to the left side, it will be a negative four x. Okay. Now, since this is a positive four, when I take it over to the other side of the equation, since it's a negative four, it's going to become a positive four. Okay. So this is equal to zero. So here we have our quadratic in its general form. Now we can solve this by using the AC method. Okay. And if you notice, A is, A is the coefficient of x squared, which is one. I have a one here in front of my x squared. So I'm simply going to say AC method I'm solving by. So A is one and I'm multiplying that by my C and C is a constant out here, which is four. So I'm multiplying that by four. So one times four is four, okay? Now I need factors of four. When I add them, I get a negative four, which is my B here. And when I add them, I get a, when I multiply them rather, I get a positive four. And obviously that would be two times two. And that would be a negative two in this case, negative two multiply negative two. So my friends, really what we have left over here, we can just simply rewrite this by expanding it to say this is x squared minus two x minus two x plus four, and that is equal to zero. Now we're just simply taking out what is common to both. So we are going to say x is common to the first two terms that we have here. So I take out a x, x into x square, that will leave us with an x, and x into negative 2x, that will leave us with a negative 2. And I'm simply going to close my bracket. I have a negative sign here, so I'm going to take that down. What is common to 2 and 4? Well, that's a 2, okay? So I'm saying a negative 2 into a negative 2, that will leave me with a positive x. A negative 2 into a positive 4, that will leave me with a negative 2, and that is equal to 0. Now, simply, I'm just going to group what's on the outside of my bracket. So I have a x minus 2. I'm just simply grouping these two. Let me just underline them. Grouping the x and the negative 2. So that's why I have a x minus 2 there. So let's just put that in a bracket and in the next bracket now I'm just going to put my x minus 2 over here and that should be equal to 0 okay now now my friends this is a really a difference of well uh, this is a perfect square rather okay so really um, we can just since we have the same thing in both brackets we can just simply say x minus 2 equal to zero okay and we can just simply solve for x so if you notice basically i will have to add x to both sides so i'm saying x minus 2 plus 2 which is equal to uh, 0 plus 2 okay so here for uh, our answer we'll have we know that a negative 2 will cancel out with a positive 2 so x is equal to 0 plus 2 that's 2 and what i'm simply going to write beside that answer my friends i'm going to write repeated repeated and why do why am i writing repeated is because if you should look carefully in the other bracket here we would have solved for that but if we should solve for this value of x we would get the same value x equal 2 because remember x minus 2 was in this bracket x minus 2 was in that bracket okay so that's why I, I, i've written repeated all right so that's basically it in this for this problem x is 2 i hope that these lessons were useful and see you in the other lessons where we'll be looking at some logarithms okay bye bye